Netherlands. Maybe Icelanders are similar to Finns. The character reminds me more of a Finn or e even more maybe an Irish man. It, it's striking to me when I did live here for several months at a time that you know I'd be driving down the road and listening to the radio and I could have been home. I mean it was it was not particularly foreign. Difficult to get in. There was like a facade. Maybe on the surface, so to say, they look like very severe and so but they have very warm hearts. Very warm hearts, much warmer and much and sincere, of course, comparing to Italians or some other southern nations. They are real friends. They are real. You can trust, you know, in any occasion, whatever occasion it. Be. There is a very direct quality to Icelandic people, which I really enjoy because we're not quite as direct in America. We sort of go around certain subjects and kid each other and um, play more games. Icelanders, you sort of know where they stand all the time, which is a very lo good thing, I think. Iceland is one of the only countries that has no history of of a strong executive. I think I've sort of seen that, you know, people thinking, well, you know, you can't tell me. I mean, you can f really feel ordinary when you go to Iceland because everyone you meet is involved with something uh, creative, arts, music, design, fashion, something like that. I like the stubbornness of them as well. When they're right, that's it, you know, they know what they're doing, we do it this way and this is how it is and they won't be told. They're reasonable unless they're actually, unless you're behind one of them in a shop. Or oh, worse yet, if you're between one of them in a counter in a shop, and then they're not particularly <laughs> friendly. Try Iceland's. That country's three largest banks failed. You heard me right. No bailout. Liz Klayman is in Davos, Switzerland at the World Economic Forum with a leader who had to make that tough choice. After the government let their biggest banks fail, sure, they had major problems, 10% unemployment. Their market lost 90% of its value. But today it is a much different story. We decided to, to let the, the banks fail. They were private banks. And as I have sometimes said, I have never understood why somehow banks are the holy churches of the modern economy, whereas it is normal to let uh, other companies uh, go bankrupt and fail. Suddenly when a bank is in trouble, everybody comes rushing and says, no, 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 this can't happen. Some people say we didn't have the money to keep them going. To some extent that is true. But it was also a part of a comprehensive policy where on many other issues. We went against the orthodox financial view prevailing in the United States and Europe. And now, four years later or so, Iceland is recovering in a remarkable way. We have 3% economic growth. We have 5% unemployment. The state finances are in a reasonable shape. So by going against the established orthodox views prevailing in the US and Europe, we actually managed to uh, create a recovery which is quite remarkable. Why, when they fail, should ordinary people, taxpayers, teachers, nurses, workers, uh, pay, the, pay the price uh, and bear the burden? as one of the main challenges that Iceland is facing at the moment is the mindset that has been developed after the financial crisis. Like we, first there was a lot of anger and blaming and now the nation has gone somewhat in a mode that success and being wealthy is a negative thing. So by continuing that we have this negative spiral of of no one going forward to really succeed because that's that's not seen well by the population so i believe that we need we need a change there